It's been a while since I've done a survival kit video, so I thought I'd put one together real quick in light of the last product review I did on the Wazoo Survival Hide. As some of you know who've seen that video, basically what the product is, it's 120 feet of paracord woven into a water bottle container slash gear stash. It's Canadian Prepper here. I humbly ask you if you do like the video, please click like comment, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, and by all means share if you enjoy the video. On it comes a ferrocium rod, a whistle, and there's a striker inside this thing which is tucked away right now and there's some fire cord here that acts as the choker that you cinch it all down with. Now, there are some downsides to using paracord as a container. Obviously, mainly, you can see that there is holes in there, so it's not going to be waterproof. Paracord, unlike this Kevlar cord that you see here, is not abrasion resistant. It's not heat resistant. And, you know, after probably a lot of use, this is going to stretch a lot, unlike Kevlar, which won't stretch. That might be something for the company to consider, actually, at some point, doing some sort of cross weave with the Kevlar cord or Technora, 950 Technora as it's called. The great thing is, is that you have 120 feet of paracord here. That's about 10 times the amount as what you typically find on those survival bracelets. So you have enough cordage to make a pretty wicked shelter. So instead of carrying paracord in your kit, why not have paracord carry your kit? That was a tongue twister. You know, this is still a concept at this point. Uh, is it practical? I guess time will tell. I think it's, you know, it's sturdy. It's not going to break. You got paracord, an algae bottle, and a climbing grade carabiner there. So this thing is going to be with you to the end if you want it to be. It's, now, of course, the problem with this concept is that it kind of, for the time being anyways, negates using the water bottle as a water container. Uh, you know, and that's something you're going to, obviously want to weigh the pros and cons of so this is just the concept i might not actually utilize this and it's got a bit of weight to it i'll post the weight here in text but uh so let me know what you think after we do the gear dump all right guys so i want to quickly go over the contents of this kit with you here and just for an fyi this is a wilderness survival kit so a lot of the things that you might need in a more everyday edc urban type situation are not going to be included in here that said, let's continue. So what we have here is a sole emergency bivy sack. Essentially, it's a glorified Mylar bag. It's a bit more hardy and it's a bit bigger and it's built to actually encapsulate your body as opposed to a Mylar blanket with just a large sheet. So this is actually built like a bivy sack using Mylar. There's 120 feet of paracord, of course, which is a lot. There's fire cord. There's the ferrocium rod, the striker, and a whistle. And this, of course, is quick release, so it's going to unravel very easy. So if you needed it in a pinch, there you go. We have the Olight 80 lumen. I believe that's I3S EOS flashlight. So 80 lumens, one AAA battery it takes. I might throw an extra AAA in there if it's worth the wait. And it actually is a really good flashlight. You can get these 80 to 100 lumen AAA flashlights pretty cheap now. I believe a Thrunite has a model that's about 20 bucks, and it's 100 lumens, so... 120 to be exact. Just a glow stick, so of course you break this in half, tie some paracord to it, spin it around. If at night you're trying to be detected, that's a great way to be seen from a distance. Polysporin, which I believe to be a probably one of the best medical ointments or medications, period, that you could bring into the wilderness. It's an antibiotic ointment, so it's going to prevent infection, which can definitely slow you down a lot, especially if you were out there for many days on end. Also, we have some duct tape. Can't go wrong with that. Some aqua tabs. I might add a few more. There's 10 here. For how important water is, you might as well carry at least 20 of these. I have some right in the rain paper just to take notes if I find myself lost and I want to mark my own waypoints with a compass. I also have a Swiss Champ. This is kind of the mainstay of the pack and basically it has pretty much everything you need and I can only say good things about the Swiss Champ knife. It has a bit of a glow-in-the-dark sticky tape on it just so I can easily find it in the pack because I usually have it in a backpack but uh, just a lot of good things on there. There's a magnifying glass, 
there is a saw and it actually really works well in contrast to some of the cheapo saws that you see on these things and it's got a couple blades on there so a lot of uh, wilderness implements on there so great little tool also have a ball compass I really like these because you know you just clip them on your person and it doesn't matter the orientation in space it's always going to be pointing upwards and uh, it's great it has this kind of like gyroscopic capability to it so you kind of have to shake it a few times just to get true north right now it is pointing north or magnetic north I should say depending on the declination lines of your latitude fishing kit so I got a hook finding sinker in there depending on your proximity to water you might want to throw some snare wire in there although paracord can be used for snaring as far as I know I've never attempted it I also have some uh, compressed towel in there some fire discs two of them if you haven't seen my video on the fire discs uh, by all means check that out I do believe that cotton rounds not cotton balls and Vaseline is probably the ultimate fire starter so don't waste money on all these elaborate fire starters that you see in the store with all the fancy packaging cotton rounds Vaseline raid the old lady's closet take her cotton rounds put some Vaseline in between them wrap it in saran wrap and honestly you can just because I have scissors on here I could cut little pieces off and create probably 20 fires just from that and it burns for a long time uh, also have ibuprofen in here and some caffeine pills now caffeine pills for me are exceptionally important in survival kits because I just know how useful having that extra pep that extra energy can be out there and people talk about the crash and stuff like that of taking caffeine pills when you're in a stressful situation but the fact is if you're crashing anyways why not have that extra little bit of adrenaline energy you know it's going to help you metabolize better it's going to help you focus a bit more for the short term and it's just going to give you that drive to succeed I also have a thing of salt so if any of you seen my video on salt uh, you know that salt is a very important and precious commodity in any sort of survival situation if I'm going to eat a squirrel, I would much prefer to have some salt on there to make it taste good. Also have some Wizzy wipes. Check out my video on toilet paper tablets. Probably my most popular video. And uh, basically, they're great for number twos. You just add a drop of water on there, and it's going to expand. And you got yourself some toilet paper. And I got about eight in there, I believe. And these are all water-sealed uh, containers. And of course, it's water-sealed secondarily in the uh, Nalgene bottle. I have some stormproof matches just for lighting quick fires because in spite of these other more rustic forms of fire starting like the ferro rod and the magnifying glass, it's nice to have something that you can use in a pinch, especially if you're in an emergency situation and you need to get warm quick. You could save yourself the hassle of the time it would take to use these other methods as great as they are. Also, I have a locking carabiner that I'll attach to the survival hide, and I think that's important because if you're running through the forest or if you've ever done any bushwhacking, you know, you're going over stumps and you're brushing against brush, and you know, it's just you have a high chance of losing your gear. So, 550 pound paracord combined with the carabiner locking is definitely going to keep this stuff on your person and make sure that you are not going to lose it if you had to make a run for it or something like that like i was saying about the climbing with the paracord paracord of course is not abrasion resistant it is prone to being cut if there's a sharp rock or something and you're trying to use it to hold your body weight yes it'll probably hold 550 pounds at a static weight but I, would I rely on it for any sort of repelling or anything like that? Personally, I can't advise you to do that. That's something you have to do at your own discretion. I would say, you know, uh, definitely scope out the situation and see if there's any alternatives. Practice your root finding skills and hopefully you can avoid doing that. But definitely serves a variety of functions to have a locking climbing grade carabiner on your person. Now, hopefully you had more gear than this and you could carry, you know, a whole bug out bag into the woods or whatever. But chances are you might find yourself in some sort of predicament where you, for whatever reason, it was not practical for you to haul all that gear in. Maybe you just went on a day hike and got lost or something to that effect. Another thing I would like to throw into this kit, if possible, is some sort of metal container. 
but I wanted to preserve the water bottle aspect. So there's not a lot of metal containers that are like this shape that are actually good for to be used as water bottles. Stanley does make a few variations of cookware and water bottles, which might work, but nothing I've seen that has the wide mouth of the Nalgene bottle that allows you to stuff all this stuff into. And a lot of those metal containers aren't actually meant for cooking, so they have plastic components built into them, which would, of course, melt off if you tried to use them for that purpose. So that's pretty much my kit in a nutshell. By all means, let me know what you would put in yours in the comments below. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and if you would, please share the video. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Prepper Network blog, an excellent resource for Canadian survivalists and preppers.